dun 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 oh I know hey hola Mr. War here at your service I know I'm not much of a singer uh, nor am I much of a hummer it's not a future job uh, prospect I know for me anyway hey it's another math video let's go ahead and get started what do we have here Woo, we have yummy treats today look at this Looks like some Rice Krispie treats, doesn't it? And, oh, and we have a problem that goes with it. How nice. First, let's look at the objective, though. The objective says multiply unit fractions by unit fractions. And did I just say that twice? Did I hear an echo? Hello, hello. Hey, that's right. Unit fractions by unit fractions. And if you recall, a unit fraction is an actual fraction that basically has a numerator of one, so one-half, one-third, one-eighth, one-seventh. Those are all examples of unit fractions. So let's look at our problem. It looks like Mrs. Silva. Ooh, she's famous. Mrs. Silva has four pans of crispy rice treats. She sends one-half of the pans to school with her children. You know, hint, hint, Elizabeth, yes. How many pans of crispy rice treats does Mrs. Silva send to school? Uh, great question. I was about to say, how many pans of crispy rice treats does Mrs. Silva send to Mr. War for him to eat them all up? By no, I'm just kidding. Oh, how I love rice be crazy. Uh, uh, what are those? Uh, crispy rice treats. Yeah, those. Those things. <laughs> anyway, so the problem seems pretty basic, and I know you're probably thinking to yourselves, although I really can't tell what you're thinking, let alone I can't really see you. It says at four, and then you're supposed to send half of that. You're thinking, well, yeah, Mr. War, that's really, really easy because if you just take one half and one half, of course, of four, which is equal to, okay, that was really easy. We could also write that as just one half times four, okay, is going to equal two. Kind of think of it as, if you like, our one times four halves, Right, because that means the same, which is four over two, and which again four divided by two is two. You're thinking, whoa, Mr. War, that was really easy. It'll get it'll get a little bit tougher. You shall see, because now I've changed the information. I've changed the numbers. Now it says Mrs. Silva has two pans of crispy rice treats. Okay, I'd like to know what happened to the other two. <clears throat> yes, she sends half of the pans to school with her children. How many pans of crispy rice treats does Mr. Silva send to school? Well, you're probably still thinking, you know what, Mr. Warrior, you said this was going to get harder, but this really isn't harder because all you're saying basically is that you have two to begin with, and we're going to find out, again, what half of that is, which is multiplied. Notice we switch those around. That makes no difference at all. So we end up with basically one because it's half of two. And again... This could be written as 2 times 1 over 2. Again, giving us 2 over 2, giving us 1. Because we're just finding what half of 2 is. I know, this is so like primary level. However, I'm going to keep changing it. These pans of crispy rice treats, so I tell you what, they keep disappearing. Elizabeth, hmm. Mrs. Silva has one pan of crispy rice treats. Okay, just one now. One pan, not even pans. She sends one half of the pan to school with her children. And again, we have the same question. Now, I'm looking at it thinking, okay, again, this seems really easy because you're saying one of one half or vice versa. We might think of it more as one half of one. Still means one half times one, which we know is one times one over two, giving us one half if you multiply across okay now this is what we've been doing basically with a whole number and with a fraction but our objective clearly said that we were going to multiply unit fractions by unit fractions you know what that means it means we're moving in the world of pure fractions now so let's go ahead and go on to the next page now we have mrs silva has one half pan of crispy rice treats she sends one half of the pans to school with her children. How many pans of crispy rice treats does Mrs. Silva send to school? Okay. Well, now we're talking half of a half. So I think this is where we're going to bring in the old area model. And oh my goodness, look at those yummy treats. I am getting hungry. 
or do I just think I'm hungry? They sure look good, don't they? Mmm, they're so gooey and crunchy, kind of crunchy. They just melt in your mouth. Anyway, kind of like M&Ms. What we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and represent that pan, okay, of crispy rice cheese. But since you only sent half of them, I think we need to see if there's something hiding back here. Dun, 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 dun. Whoa, look at that. Pretty sneaky, I know. So what if we just say right from the get-go that this is the half, okay? Like if we took our piece of paper, and this would be the piece of paper, and we fold that paper in half, this would be the half of rice, uh, the <laughs> crispy rice treats. It's like a tongue twister. A crispy rice treat, this would be the half the pan. Of course, that would mean the whole thing would be the whole pan. So let's go ahead and just mark that, saying this is the one, the one whole. And then down here, and I guess we could actually get rid of that. Goodbye. And then down here, this would be the half. Okay, we, we good so far? And now we're asked to find half of it. Well, let's go ahead and let's mark that half first. Let's mark the half. So I mark the half like so. So this shows the half of the pan of crispy rice treats. Okay. And, but now we need to find half of the half. Well, in this case, I think what might work is if I just brought in a line and say, okay, well, this is about a half right here. So I'm asked to find half of the half. So I'm splitting this half in half. I, I probably should come over here and mark that. We'll get red again. So this way, I can show that this is the half of the half. I know, I sound like I'm saying some weird stuff. So let's make some notes along here record some of our neat little observations. Definitely one thing is that we've decided that is that we're, we're finding one half of one half, which we know is one half times one half. And one half times one half was, well, one quarter, because two times two is four, one times one is one. So we've just found the quarter. And if we were to mark that, we could show that as well showing that this is the half, and you can see this is where it crisscrosses, because this is that half of the half. I know my lines, oh my goodness, they're really swerving all over the place here. <laughs> it's all fun. That's my art. So you can see that this is our hole. Now look at this is one quarter of four quarters. You have a quarter here, a quarter there, and a quarter of that one hole. And look how nice that, so that comes out. So Mrs. Silva has uh, sent uh, one quarter, okay, of a pan of crispy rice treats to school for Mr. Wara, okay? Okay, so let's continue on. We have problem two. Now our problem is a little bit different. It says Mrs. Silva has one third pan of crispy rice treats. She sends one half of the treats to school with her children. What fraction of a pan of crispy rice treats does Mrs. Silva send to school? Okay, kind of interesting, looking at this right from the get-go, I'm noticing that the one-third pan now is less than one-half. Before, she was sending one-half. We had one-half times one-half. Now, we have one-third. And I know one-third, though it may seem like it's a larger fraction because there's a three in the denominator, it is not. One-third is smaller because our whole has been, you know, uh, broken up or divided into three equal pieces, so those pieces must be smaller. So making an estimate even before I start with my problem, uh, I can say that one-third of one-half then must be less. Okay, it must be less. If a third, if you're starting off with less and you're finding the half of that amount, then that means our answer should be less as well. Okay, and I don't want there to be any problems with that letter, so I'm going to rewrite it again neither. There you go. Okay, no problem. And so I'm going to come over here. Let me just get black. This is what we're being asked, and we're, at, we're at being asked to have one-third of one-half. And again, we just talked about how our answer should be smaller. Let's see if I have anything hidden, any tools of any kind. Oh, there we go. Magic. So let's go ahead and bring out this guy. And again, he's going to represent that pan. And we'll do him like so, large enough so we can see him. And then remember that that's going to represent that one that we need. So we'll do one, 
one whole pan. Of course, only a third of it's going to be going. So I'm thinking, you know what? We're going to need to maybe if you had a piece of paper at home, you could show this and you could divide it into thirds. So this way, we could show our thirds this way. So if the paper was folded, you could see the thirds right there. Okay. And now, and we know that one third went to uh, to school. Okay, it was one third of pan. I should say um, that's not true. She says a half, but she had one third of a pan. So let me go ahead and show this one third here because this is the one third. And then I'm also going to shade that third of a pan. Okay, there's that third of a pan. Now, next we need to, so she's going to send half of that amount. So that means like I almost need to split this in half. So what I'm going to do here is, let me just borrow this guy. And we'll make him really long. Woo, fun, fun. Okay, so now you can see we've split this in half. So we can show that half of the third that's here. This part we're not really concerned with, at least at this point. We, we don't need this for any reason. So now we have that half. Well, let me mark that as well. So this here is one half. So now we have that one half of that third. So I'm also going to want to show that amount. And you can see where my crisscrossing is going on here. It looks sort of like my little, like those little, uh, what are those waffle cones? It looks just like that little pattern. And we have six equal, six equal pieces now, and we have one out of those six. Interestingly, one six is the amount of uh, crisp rice be treats, crispy rice treats that Mrs. Selva is going to send to school. Is one six showing that amount one third times one half. Okay, uh, let's move on to the next problem here. So now we have yet again a change in our fractions. Here we have one third uh, pan of crispy rice treats. That's how much Mrs. Silva has, which is the same. But she sends only one quarter of the treats to school with her children this time. Okay, so what we're going to do here in this problem is we're going to investigate what happens. I know this has come up in, in earlier view videos, but like one third of one quarter. And is that the same as one quarter of one third? Which again, the of, we translated to being multiply. Well, we're going to go ahead and try to find that out right now. So what I'm going to do here is let me get this set up. Okay, uh, I just wanted to set this problem so that we have the one hole and the one hole. Here we're showing one third of the pan, and I divided this into thirds horizontally. And this one here, I'm doing the opposite, one fourth of one third, so I decided to split it in fourths horizontally on this side. Now I'm going to continue on with uh, um, with dividing this into, uh, well, let me, let me mark this here first. Okay, so let's mark this with red. So here is showing our one-third. So I'm going to show that one-third right here. Here I'm going to show the one-fourth. Find if I'm one-fourth of one-third, which means I'll need to divide this into quarters, and I'll need to divide this into thirds. We'll come over here and do that. So here I need to find fourths. So I'm going to go ahead and get two more lines. Now I've divided into fourths. And over here, I'm going to go ahead and divide it into thirds. Now notice that they're kind of flip-flop right now. If I put in my lines showing my by one third, if you recall, my one third was this whole section down here. So I'm going to go ahead and show that one third there. This was my one fourth, so I'm going to show that one fourth going all the way across. Okay, it's a little bit smaller unit. Now when I come over here and I do my uh, my my quarter, because I have one third of one fourth, and since I did one fourth this way, it's this little section here. That's the only one fourth. I mean, I could do it all the way up here as well. Let me show you that so you can see that. So that's all the one-fourth. Over here, I'm trying to find of one-third. And the third was this section here. And it's still, now if you notice, they're flip-flopped. They're flip-flopped in the way that here it's thirds across. Now this here is going, this will actually show my one-third. OK, 
Okay, and then over here, this shows my one fourth. And it's interesting, that's how they're the same. They both end up making smaller units because we flip flop. We made smaller un units of twelfths. So we have twelve here, and so we have just one twelfth. And over here we have one twelfth by multiplying across one over twelve. And you can see how they crisscross, and that shows that. Okay, so let's look at this next problem here. And now we have um, a sales lot is filled with vehicles for sale. This is one third of the vehicles are pickup trucks, one third of the trucks are white. What fraction of all vehicles are white pickup trucks? Well, let's go ahead and get our, our area model here. Um, we want to start off showing that this would be the whole. And this whole area model suggests that this here is the one. And in this case, what it means is all the vehicles here. So all the vehicles here are in this area model. And we're trying to find one third of the vehicles that are pickup trucks. So we'll go ahead and get our line here. Let's show one third. And I'll start going this way. It really doesn't matter which way you go. That's the beauty of it. You just need to show your one third. And I'm going to go ahead and do that. And uh, this is my one third right here going across. And I'm just going to show you that. So one third of the vehicles are pickup trucks. That's these here. I don't know what the rest of these vehicles are. Two thirds of them are something else, but one third of them are pickup trucks. Then it says one third of the trucks are white. So out of that quantity, we need to find one third. Well, we can take our line here and we'll just divide this into thirds. And now you can see here, if we show the one third, I'll get a color. Let's see, how about blue this time? So if this is a third, then this is going to be the one third of the trucks are white. And actually, to be completely accurate with the problem, even though I know we did this the last time, since these here aren't pickup trucks up here, we can't actually say that they're white because those aren't the trucks. It's just these right in this, this section here. Now, um, so now we've divided. So we've divided in this amount here. Uh, we said it was one third, and then it said one third, which is these down here. So now we have one third and one third. One third times one third is equal to one ninth, according to my math. Well, is that true? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have nine equal pieces, so it's the denominator, and one of them is shaded for the one ninth. And that, my friends, is a great way to model for mathematics, uh, mathematical practice for showing us that one third of one third or one third times one third does equal one ninth. And these area models, I think, really help clarify that. Well, my friends, I'm here to say that this is the end of another video. Please don't cry. Let me go ahead and put in the rest of code word that you'll need in order to get credit for this assignment. Now, live long and prosper.